Witch Trials Weekly, Video 24, June the 24th to June the 30th, 1692. Five guilty women. Hello. This week's edition of Witch Trials Weekly is being filmed here at the Judge Samuel Holton House. This house was originally built in 1670 by Benjamin Holton and his wife Sarah. It was later made into a tavern by their son Benjamin Jr. in 1715 and was so all the way until 1750. This home is currently operated by the General Israel Putnam Chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution and it's been added on to since 1670. You're going to see an original model of what the home looked like when we get inside. Thank you for joining us. I'm sitting here in what was once the meeting room of the Benjamin Holton House, which is now the Judge Samuel Holton House. This is a model of what it is believed the home may have looked like in 1670. In prison, Abigail Hobbs was visited by the specter of John Proctor, who brought her the devil's book and made her touch it. He also brought her several poppets, saying that it was better to afflict than be afflicted. Testimony was also recorded against Tichaba. Mary Bradbury, who is related by marriage to the Cloyce, Nurse, Eastie, Wilds, and Bishop families, was supposedly arrested because she had been to several different witch meetings. Much of the testimony against her was from the Cars, who were related to Anne Putnam Sr. June 28th was the trial of Sarah Good. It began at 9 a.m. and was held in the Salem townhouse. Her cumulative anger frightened people. Her daughter Dorcas was in prison, her infant daughter had died, and her husband was testifying against her. Samuel and Mary Abbey had taken in the goods, but had to kick them out after only six months because of their frequent arguments. After they were asked to leave, 17 of the Abbey's cattle died over the course of two years, in addition to several sheep and hogs. Other neighbors spoke of dead livestock after interactions with Sarah Good as well. All spectral evidence was brought against her from the past and from her preliminary examination. Also, all of the girls suffering over the course of the past five months was brought against her as evidence as well. During her trial, one of the girls said that Sarah stabbed her in the chest with a knife and the blade had broken. She produced a sliver of the blade. A boy in the court, however, came forward and said that he had broken his knife in the presence of this girl. When comparing the knife to the sliver of the blade found on the girl's person, they matched perfectly. In spite of this, the boy was dismissed and the afflicted were allowed to continue with their testimony. Sarah Good was found guilty of witchcraft. Susanna Martin was the first to be tried on June 29th. She pled not guilty and the girls convulsed and acted out as usual, some of them even vomiting blood. First, the court read the account of her preliminary examination and how she had laughed. Although she was not perceived as menacing, Susanna Martin was uncanny and outspoken and often spooked the livestock. Many neighbors also spoke of dead livestock after they had confrontations with her. Jarvis Spring showed a bite mark on his finger where Susanna Martin's specter had supposedly bitten him seven years earlier. Robert Dower said he was attacked by a cat-like creature when Susanna Martin had been acquitted of an earlier witchcraft charge. Susanna Martin denied using witchcraft and said she had led a most virtuous and holy life. Still, she was found guilty. Most of the evidence against Rebecca Nurse came from the afflicted, with various observers verifying that certain convulsions or afflictions happened on certain days. There were also several depositions against Rebecca from Ann Putnam Sr. Sarah Bibber said Rebecca Nurse pricked her knee. However, Sarah Nurse, Rebecca's daughter, saw Sarah Bibber pull pins from her own clothing before pricking herself. Sarah Holton was convinced that witchcraft had killed her husband Benjamin three years earlier. He was only 33 years old when he died and hadn't lived to see their only child, Benjamin Jr. Benjamin Sr. had been healthy until his pigs had gone less than a mile down the road to Rebecca Nurse's farm and uprooted several of her sprouts. She stormed over railing and scolding, ready to have one of her sons shoot the pigs. Nathaniel and Hannah Ingersoll said that witchcraft had never been suspected in the death of Benjamin Holton until now. Two of Rebecca's daughters spoke of their mother's illness and said that her supposed witch marks were from that. 20 depositions were given against her in person and several more were given in writing. The jury initially gave a verdict of not guilty, but as soon as foreman Thomas Fisk announced this, the girls cried out. Court recessed. 
One of the judges said he was unhappy with the verdict, and another said that he planned on indicting Rebecca based on this latest outburst. The jury asked to reconsider. They could not agree on how to assess Rebecca's earlier statement identifying herself with Deliverance Hobbs. What? Do you bring her? She is one of us. Did she mean Deliverance was a fellow witch, or simply a fellow prisoner? When asked to clarify this statement, Rebecca didn't reply, perhaps because she couldn't hear. Thus, Rebecca Nurse lost her last chance to defend herself and was sentenced to death by hanging. On June 30th, Elizabeth Howe pled not guilty. Her family hadn't abandoned her, as others had abandoned their accused family members. At least 12 people testified on her behalf, while others testified against her. Neighbors who had been opposed to her joining the church had supposedly been plagued by misfortune. She too was found guilty. Evidence was also given against John and Elizabeth Proctor, Martha Corey, and Sarah Wilds. Sarah Wilds' trial may also have been on June 30th. She was overwhelmed by many long-standing suspicions against her, as well as Deliverance Hobbs' vengeful testimony. She too was found guilty. This video was produced with special permission from the author, Marilyn K. Roach, and publisher, Cooper Square Press. The Salem Witch Trials, a day-by-day -day chronicle of a community under siege, covers the years 1692 to 1697 in detail. It also touches briefly on important and relevant events before and after this time. We are proud to carry all of Ms. Roach's books and publications in our museum store. To get a copy for your personal research and enjoyment, please visit www.salemwitchmuseum.com.